Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. I'm very excited because Mermaid has officially started and we have already gone through the first three days of Mermaid um, and yeah that's what you will see in the background. Those are my speed paints for the first three prompts. Tropical, Seahorse and Rainbow. Before we start I wanted to say Thank you all so much for participating in my prompt list. Um, I wasn't expecting so many drawings at all. You all did such an amazing job. You all made so beautiful and inspiring and so cool and imaginative drawings. I'm just over the moon about them and I love looking through them and sharing them in my story and I love how much thought and creativity you put into them. and. And I'm excited to see what the rest of the month is having in store for us and what you are going to be creating. Thank you so much for everyone who has submitted a drawing to the Mersonia 2019 hashtag. Um, yeah, I'm going to be sharing them in the end of the video. So once we have seen all the speed paints, I'm going to be showing each drawing that has been made so far until I'm recording this right now and then the next ones in the next video. About my drawing, um, this is for the first prompt tropical, obviously. Um, what I didn't tell you was that I made a drawing for the prompt tropical before that, and I'm going to blend it in right now. And um, yeah, I wasn't really happy with the way I drew this because I was approaching it like any other drawing. She's just kind of standing up and yeah, like this normal person who is just straight from top to bottom bottom and when i had finished the drawing i realized what i had done wrong in the cool thing about mermaids is that they are underwater and that they can swim and move in a cool way and their hair is floating around and their tail is just kind of all over the place i guess and that you can do all these cool poses and what I did was kind of boring. I just drew her standing, even though she's a mermaid and should be swimming. And so I just scrapped the drawing and started fresh because I still had some time left. And I'm much happier with the drawing I came up with in the end, which you are seeing right now. Um, I was very much inspired by hula dancers because that's something I was immedi immediately thinking of when I thought of the word tropical. So yeah, I wanted to make, I was, so I wanted to draw a mermaid who is dancing in the water and she is listening to some kind of music and yeah, she's just enjoying herself and having her fish companions with her and her tail and body are flowing with the water and with the dance. So yeah, I'm very happy that I went back to redraw her again. This is the finished drawing that I came up with for the first prompt, Tropica. The second prompt was Seahorse and I wanted to make a kind of more close-up-ish illustration of a mermaid with her seahorse companion and I wanted it to look like they were both maybe laughing at something and maybe talking about something funny or yeah just having a good time I don't know um, I kind of went ahead and just kept this illustration very easy to do very simple a lot of things I really like plants a portrait a lot of hair because during that time I was kind of struggling already with mermaid to finish Mermaid and also a lot of other stuff I had to do for school and for a huge commission I'm doing right now. I had to stay up very late. Usually I'm someone who would go to bed very early and to be able to do all the stuff I had to do I had to stay up until 3 a.m. and that's just something I'm not used to. Usually I would go to bed at around 10 p.m. or something. Yeah, and that was just a huge difference my body wasn't used to and that made me feel very tired and sad and just down about myself. And so yeah, I just wanted to keep the drawing as simple 
as possible and as enjoyable as possible. That's why this is just a simple portrait for day two. I'm also going to show you the effects I added on top of the fin pretty much finished colored and shaded drawing effects that I added in the end to create this kind of bubbly underwater effect that I really like to use and that I already used in the mermaid drawing I did last year. And yeah, a few of you were asking last year how I did it and I couldn't really show back then, but I'm taking the opportunity of mermaid this year to show you a few yeah, tricks and effects I've learned over the past few years. So once I had the illustration fully colored and shaded and also the lines colored in, I then added a solid color layer on top in this kind of dark turquoise color and I set the layer mode to color and lower down the opacity. That way you get this kind of uniform complete solid monochrome color look and make the colors look more together and coherent. I then also added a color balance layer like I always do, pushed the colors more to blue, pinkish tones because I really like the look that you get from that. And what I did then is I added an image into my file as a separate layer on top. And this image is something you can find when you search for bokeh effects for Photoshop. It's a yeah, image with these kind of crystal light leak thingies, these circles that are very bright on a dark background. And to make them to make them flow into the drawing I use the layer mode screen. And what screen is it's the opposite of multiply pretty much whereas multiply just kind of has the white parts disappear and the dark parts come out more screen makes the dark parts disappear and the light parts come out more so the dark background of this bouquet image disappears and you just have these light bubble thingies come out on top of your drawing and kind of merge with your drawing. What you can do then is just add a mask to mask all the parts that you don't want to be in the drawing. So if you have any harsh edges from the drawing or any light bubbles you don't really like, you can just use a soft brush or a gradient to hide these parts. Yeah, and then I just, when I had that, I really liked the outcome I had gotten from the drawing and I started using hue and saturation to play out, play around a little more with the drawing. I then added another <laughs> color layer on top um, to kind of make it more, look more pinkish. Um, yeah, but I was already pretty happy with how it was looking and I then merged all the effect layers together so you can see the effect that you have using all of these effect layers together. Um, I think it does make a huge difference in the end. Yeah, and these are just effects I like to use on my drawing to make the illustration look a little more polished and finished. And yeah, have this cool bubbly underwater effect. And something I did then when I wasn't because I wasn't 100% happy with the seahorse is something you can do to quickly change the color of an object that you have in your drawing. Because you have a lot of layers, it can be kind of hard to change the entire color of something. And to do that, it's actually pretty easy. You can just select all the layers that you want to color change later on and you group them together to a group and then you duplicate the group and so you have a backup copy and you merge all the layers of your group together. So you have a flat layer of just the seahorse or for example, when you want to change her hair color, you can just flatten down her entire hair to this one flat layer and then using the hue change tool, you can actually change her entire hair color to be something completely different and still keep the shaded part in, which is really cool if you quickly want to change 
a color from one thing to something completely different. So yeah, that's something I used in this drawing to change up the seahorse color because I wanted to make it look more purpley. The next prompt um, is or was rainbow and I was very excited for this prompt. What you can't see really now is how much I actually struggled with drawing the face. It took me one and a half hours to finish only the lines of the face. I struggled for one and a half hours. I hated everything I drew and yeah, I had to draw the, the eyes over and over and over again, drew over them, used liquify. I just couldn't make them look like I wanted to and it it was it would just drive me crazy because I had this deadline to finish this illustration for Mermaid and I just couldn't make her look good. Um, yeah, but then in the end, I when I was about to give up, I just kind of managed to make the eyes look like I wanted to. And I actually, I think I kind of make, I kind of made a breakthrough in drawing faces, which is probably because I had to draw them over and over again and yeah I'm really happy with how the face turned out in the end. When I had the face drawn it was just straight from that very easy for me to finish the illustration but I just struggled with the face so much. And also um, yeah, you shouldn't be looking too close at the pose because um, it's supposed to be this kind of foreshortened effect and she's kind of swimming towards you and her body is yeah kind of foreshortened and I couldn't really execute that very well I think I could have done better and that's something I want to practice a little more and yeah get better at in the future. So yeah Meme is already a great way to learn things, get better at drawing things and also to see where you still have to improve. So yeah that's why I really love drawing challenges like this one. Something I wanted to talk about as well is something that came up on my Q&A post when I posted that on Instagram and that's about how artists come up with cool ideas or get so much inspiration or be so creative when drawing and that's something I would wonder about a lot when I was very young and I thought these artists just had these amazing minds to come up with so many creative ideas and I just was in awe and couldn't understand how they would be so creative and had so many cool ideas yeah and um, they were probably all just looking up images on Google or had these reference books or whatever they were looking at references to give them ideas and I wanted to make clear a hundred percent clear that for each of these mermaid drawings I used pose references, I looked at mermaid tails and how other artists had drawn them in the past and I looked at these mermaid crowns that you can buy on Etsy and I made my own coming from that and this crown that I drew isn't one exactly that you can buy but it's an accumulation of different images I looked at before drawing it and I made sketches and develop the illustration beforehand. This speed paint is just the execution of all these ideas, image collection and sketching that I did beforehand and I wanted to kind of make that clear that it's not just all coming from my head and I'm not just sitting down, oh, okay, the prompt is rainbow and just straight up drawing the image. That's not what happens. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to get that off my chest because no one said that to me when I was young and wondering how artists could be so amazing. And what I did for this drawing is I wanted to make her look like she's lit from below. So do a slightly different lighting from my usual lighting to kind of challenge myself. And I really like how it looks, this kind of soft look, light from this kind of soft look of the light coming from below. And I also had a lot of fun doing the gradient in her tail because I never use colors like this and just went all out and just use all the rainbow colors to make her tail look as colorful as possible. 
Okay, we are slowly but surely coming to the end of my speed paints and to the most important part that um, yeah, I've been very excited to share with you. All the amazing drawings that you have been doing in the past three days. Um, I wasn't expecting so many drawings at all. I was maybe thinking a few of you would participate and do maybe one or two drawings, but you guys just completely crushed it. You made these amazing drawings. You, uh, I don't know what to say. You guys are just the best. And um, thank you for making so many beautiful drawings and you all using the hashtag, using my prompts. There are so many prompt lists out there and you chose to use mine, which makes me so, yeah, which makes me feel so happy and thankful for your amazing support. Thank you so much for watching my videos, watching until now, for commenting on my mermaid drawings this month. You have been so supportive and kind and for participating, for posting them and yeah, for being a subscriber and for leaving amazing comments. I don't, don't want to come off as too, as too cheesy, but I'm just so happy and I feel blessed to have this community here in this small corner of the internet where we can encourage each other to draw more and where we can share our art and where we can share tips and yeah just be happy and positive and yeah I'm excited for what's to come and excited for this journey with you together um yeah just that's just something I wanted to say thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you very soon in my next video. Bye!